Welcome to the Nehemiah Entrepreneurship Podcast. I've got somebody back, Allison Wilkinson. Allison, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. I am so excited to talk today. You are our first interview in the new year. Hey, <laughs> that means it's got to be great. <laughs> so, you know, Allison, we, we thought it's a new year. We're still in pandemic. You launched your business in midst of the pandemic last year right at the heart of it mm -hmm. so we thought you know what uh, there are many people listening and watching our podcast who are considering launching a business you know many of them are trying to grow their businesses but we thought let's let's talk to people about how would you is it wise to launch a business in this of a pandemic and if if it is how would you go about that we said you know what let's have allison back in studio and deal with that because you actually did it and you're still in business today um, so uh, Allison uh, Wilkinson is the founder and, and CEO of, of the I Am School of Music. Uh, she's a mother of four, uh, happily married to a young man uh, who actually happens to be the son-in-law, the son, sorry, of our chairman. Uh, she's a new entrepreneur. She's also now a member of BSA, the Business Success uh, Accelerator. Yeah. Uh, and I am. She's actually a client now. So. So let's let's kind of start there. You, you know, you just, I mean, December was, first of all, Addison, I'm so impressed by you, you, a, you have a can-do attitude. I mean, by the way, is this how you are in everything you do? I mean, you just set a goal and get it done. Is that how you are in everything you do? You know, it's funny because my husband and um, our friends were talking last night and we were talking about uh, having an entrepreneurial spirit of sort of being afraid and pushing forward instead of being afraid and running away in zigzags. That's right. And, um, and yeah, that's that's just kind of I I get a bright idea and I go with it. I a lot of a lot of times that's what I do. It's it's it, you know my my husband is not entrepreneurial by nature, um, and so I think that that was that was a God given gift to not <laughs> have my husband. So he stops me from going every which way, and the Lord has been really gracious to stop me from going every which way. But yeah, I just, I like to get it done. You know, in my new book, uh, and by the way, if you've not ordered my new book yet, you want to go to our website, put a link there for the new book. It, it's, it's, if you get it, order it now, you, you're able to, uh, to get a pre, pre release copy, by the way, at a pretty price, those who are watching. We kind of profile what it means to be an entrepreneur. We have these kind of uh, surveys in there. You epitomize, I mean, you would rank very high. In, in that entrepreneur DNA. I mean, you would right up there. I mean, would you agree? I, you know what? I'm so excited about your book. I've been excited about your book since the conference, since the 2020 uh, conference. So um, yeah, I think, I think I'm entrepreneurial by nature. I get restless, not, not moving. All right, I'm telling you. So your, your oldest child is how old? I mean, your youngest, sorry, your youngest child. Six. Six. All right. So you got four children, a six-year-old, and then she's going to launch a business in this pandemic. Look, we're going to talk about that. So, Allison, but recently you you reached out uh, because you needed some 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 coaching. But what I, I remember, I was talking to you on the phone, and then you immediately made it clear that you were not looking for charity. So let's first talk about that because many entrepreneurs. Um, you know, uh, there's this spirit in the body of Christ of uh, not always uh, paying for what you get or at least not appreciating certain key services. You have a certain value system. Uh, you, you believe in investing for what you need. Uh, is that, it was, it was just unique to me. It was, it was, is that kind of how you are? And if so, how did you become that way? I... Uh... I have a very deep I have a, a very deep conviction about the value of people and the the honor that just being being made in the image of God confers so just general grace about you are you are created in the image of God taking advantage of you would be a wrong thing to do but then on top of that if you add in the made in the image of God and redeemed by Christ, that is a double honor. 
And so to, to, it feels, it feels a little like saying, oh, well, hey, you know, we're, we're, you know, come, let's you just yeah. give me a little bit. That feels like that feels a little bit like a lack of honor to their identity. I, just, I don't know if that's a little bit too strongly stated. And I like, there are times when it's really important for me to graciously receive from people who are giving to me. But um, I don't think that, I think that, um, I think that there's honor that needs to, that needs to be given in the family of Christ. The I love that. All of our coaches and trainers will love to hear this because one of the challenges in the body of Christ at times, as people look to long start businesses, is not placing value in the support they get. And, and as a result, cutting corners. You follow me? Um, and, and not getting the right kind of support and services. And I love what you're saying. It's about a, a matter of honor. And now, you raise another point, which is there has to be a distinction, however, between if you need help, you need help, right? You, you don't fake that. Mm -hmm. But if you lead with honor, you will always get the help you need. Does that make sense? I'm hoping so. Oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, I really like that. So, now, so you kind of came in all the way, and I was just, I just admire your tenacity. How it was just, it's just been less than 30 days, actually. So how in this short time, how was the coaching process for you so far? I, I wish I'd started it with, I wish I'd started with it. Um, I, I cannot, um, I cannot overstate how great it was to join the group. And especially I, I was able to join the Kenya group, which was, tremendous because one of my favorite things one of my favorite things sometimes to just sit and think about is um how um is how god is a god for everybody and he's his impact is not just my life and not just the lives of people around me but all over the world that he is god of everybody so being able to work with these entrepreneurs in kenya who um who are honoring God with their time and their money. It's like, yeah, of course, because God's principles are everywhere. But then just beyond, beyond that, beyond the loving to see God work through everybody all over the world, um, the, the coaching just was like, how did I do without this? What was I do? What was I doing before? What was sweet Lord? How did I? So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been the it's been the game changer for sure, and it's only been one month. And, and incredible, and you raise a point as well because um, so in you joining the group coaching, you join the Kenya group, and some people may perceive that to be wait a minute, you're an American, why would you join the group in Africa? But that hasn't been a downgrade for you, right? No, no. You because those listening would say, well, but, but wouldn't you want to be with Americans who know better, who are more sophisticated and, you know, they, they don't see Africans. Uh, tell them about this Kenya group. And so the fact that they can see that that Africans are not what they may perceive on television. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sorry, but didn't the winner of the 2020 business plan competition come from Kenya. I, yeah. I, I saw her and I was like, oh, it's her. It's <laughs> I had a little bit of like celebrity shock or whatever seeing her, but no, I mean the, the level of, um, the level of, um, just intelligence. I don't know how else to say that, but it, it was like, this is, this is just golden. And especially I can't, and I feel like such a toad because I can't remember his name. Um, but there was one person in the business group who owned, must've been 370,000 businesses or something. <laughs> but, the, Maver the Maverick guy, John. The Maverick. Yes. And he's, I like, I'm already planning my trip over. I was I got off the group call and was looking up uh, flights to Kenya so I can try his Maverick restaurant down there. And and I was like, oh, and just listening to him, sitting under him and listening to him, 
Um, it never occurred to me that I was lacking anything wow. because of how rich what he had to say was and how it did it didn't feel it felt like people who were building businesses and honoring the Lord. It didn't it didn't the idea that, oh, these are Africans and I'm an American never occurred to me until you just said it. Wow, this is awesome. Well, if you want to join a group coaching program, just go to our website, nehemiahecommunity.com and, and connect with the a group coaching program closest to you or that fits your, your specialty. Now, let's talk about this. So we want for this podcast to help those who are like you considering launching a new business in the midst of this space, this pandemic. And, and some let's give some tips and guidance based on your, your own journey. So you made a decision last year to launch your business. First of all, tell them what your business is. So I am I am establishing a movement <laughs> is kind of how, how we're seeing it now. Um, we started as a school of music with the idea of training teachers to um, to love their students where they are, basically to honor them in their learning process, kind of the way I was talking about, like these people are made in the image of God. How are we going to honor them in their learning process? How are we going to make music feel good? Because a lot of times if you're making music in front of somebody, it feels awkward or it makes you feel kind of exposed. How do we make people feel good while they're making music? Um, and, and what are some science things that we can use? What are some psychology and brain physiology things we can use to inform that? Um, and we've been successful. We started at the end of September. We've got 64 students. We've got seven teachers. Um, we've got a book coming out next month. I've got invitations to speak at some major music education conferences. It's just been, um, it's been remarkable. But I think the best thing that has happened in the last three months is um, getting to talk to parents and having them go, well, you know, I, I can't tell, I can't tell Harper that it is, I, I can't tell her that it's piano lesson day because she will bug me all day. What time does it start? What time is piano lesson start? Why isn't it time now? Why can't I do it right now? Mom, is it piano lesson day? And it's just like that sort of like, they're excited to do something that maybe isn't always perceived as exciting. Maybe piano lessons are a feel, you know, or you imagine them like, Ugh. but these kids don't have that. They love it. And they don't notice that what they're doing is really hard, which is great. Wow. And I want to get into how you do that to create that dynamic in, in a minute. So, but so you launch it. So the I Am School of Music get launched September of last year. And those who are watching and listening, you may have an idea, maybe music or something else that you want to launch. Now, so didn't it occur to you that there was a pandemic, Allison, that it may have not been the best of time? Or did you know that you kind of says, here's why it would be a good idea. So, so what made you think it was a good idea to do it at that moment versus waiting till the pandemic was over? I, I couldn't wait until the pandemic was over because the main push, <clears throat> the main push behind me even starting it was my own kids. I was looking at my four kids and realizing they are, they need some people. They need to be able to see just a few people. They need to be able to play and have all the joy I know that comes from playing music with people. You know how it feels when you're just like, when there's music in the room and you're just sort of jamming with people. I was, I, my kids need that because they're stuck at home and this is not this is not good for them. So I thought, well, I'll just start this little thing. I'll, I'll maybe take on a few more students and uh, maybe I'll bring on a violin teacher and, um, and then it exploded. <laughs> So, wow. Yeah. So we're talking to Allison Wilkinson, the founder and CEO of the I Am School of Music. She launched her business September last year, a new business. And we're walking through the process she took in launching the business to help you as you consider launching your own business. So, Allison, so it's interesting because all innovation, ideas, um, business is born by based on a need. 
right? There's a problem that occurred. In this case, it was your own problem that you were trying to address. Little did you know that many others will have that same problem, right? Yeah. So, are, so are those watching and listening, you consider starting a new business. First, the question for you is, uh, is there a problem that you can resolve, right? Maybe it's an issue you're solving yourself that you think others may need as well. Is there a problem? But let's back up a little bit, Addison. Why music? Because people are watching and listening might say, hey, I want to start a music as well. Is there a prerequisite? Why music? Why not uh, dance? Or why not um, a, a, uh, a grocery store? Why not a, uh, you follow me, a barbershop? Why music? Um. Well, I, just so you know, we are hoping to expand into dance and art. So if you have a heart for dance or art or acting or those sorts of things, eventually we are going to take our, our core beliefs and expand them into those places. And I'm looking, at some point we will be looking for partners in that to say, hey, how would you make an I am school of theater? How would you bring, um, emotional health into a theater place and actually build people like what, how can we build people well in art? But I chose music because I'm a musician and uh, my mom was a musician. Actually, I was, <laughs> I was born shortly. She was, she was doing a big, uh, like I think there were a thousand people in the church and she was leading a choir and I just, you know, I guess kicked right out and couldn't wait to join the music. So music is the thing that I I had to be able to share, and I I saw how, um, and we we talked about this a little bit last time, but I saw how God wired humans in their minds to be able to express how they feel through music in a way that's harder to do through words, and sometimes it's just. It's, it's, it's a good tool to give to people who really have a lot of feelings that they need to get out, which in 2020, there were a lot of feelings to get out. There just were, and people needed that tool. Wow. So are you suggesting, uh, Allison, that music is, an, is, a form of is a form of expression that allows for humans to maybe express things that they could not necessarily do in, in words? Music becomes that extension uh i'm not suggesting it i am declaring it wow <laughs> the the words part of our brain is only on this side and it's only about a thumb size so if you are trying to say something in words if you're trying to express something you've got this much real estate whereas something like 50 percent of our brain matter is feeling and in and that is where music is located. Music is located in that big section. So it's like, do I want to express myself with this? And like all these feelings, all these feelings and all this music, feelings and music live in the same place in the brain. Wow, wow. So, yeah. I'm reminded of the Negro spirituals, mm. right? That, you know, slave and music of that hardship and difficulties, one of the ways that they express themselves, we brought them, joy brought them peace drew them closer to their god brought them comfort was music and even how they communicated so we can apply that to every, any dimension i know for me as i work throughout my day sometimes i have my 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 uh my music playing to kind of give me take me into that different zone and it, it makes the work a little lighter and so forth so so allison so far you've taught us that okay why not in the midst of a pandemic? Because the pandemic created a problem for you. Children had nothing to do. They needed a way to interact. And then the next thing you teach us, why music? Because that's a gift you have. And you realize the power and potential of that gift for others as well. So if you're gonna launch a new business, or consider it as their problem you're trying to address, and is that problem a problem that that can help others as well. Are others having an, enough of that problem? And then secondly, do you have a gift or a skill that you can bring to, a, so you can use to provide a solution to that, that can help people? But I said, but how did you know that others will have the same problem? You know, I, I mean, how did, how, how did you know that there's, a, there was, there's enough people that would need uh, your solution 
to make it a business? Um, three things really, uh, really came to bear. One of them was something I already knew existed. One of them was something that other people affirmed me in. And the other piece was what the Lord did with it. So the first piece is that um, as a music teacher, um, with as much humility as I can say this with, I'm very popular because the kids who come to my studio, the kids who work in my choirs, they feel good about themselves. They can't wait to go because <clears throat> the experience that they have builds them up. They feel confident and powerful and they've expressed their feelings and everybody's expressing their feelings together. It's very powerful. God made us to feel community when we sing together, which is actually why it's so important that we sing together as the body of Christ, because he built our brains to connect to each other when we sing. So in choirs, they loved it. In my studio, they feel cared for. So I knew that what I was offering was sellable because I was already having to say, no, you can't come in my studio. Don't use my name. You you don't recommend me because I, I don't have any more space. So I knew that that was the case, but I, I still had, you know, like, I don't know, how do I get this out there? The business side, I don't really know what to do. And what happened was people came behind me and said, no, this absolutely needs to happen. I had a friend in marketing who was like, I will do this work for free because I believe in you. And I had enough people who believed in what I was doing and believed in my gift that I had enough support at the beginning to start. But the the thing that kind of underpinned all of that was that God was making things happen. I wasn't, I was working, I was working really hard, but God was making it clear, like I am going to do this work and you are going to get up every day and you are going to work very hard, but you are going to leave you're going to leave the success of this in my hands. And he he did, he brought, he brought the students, he brought the teachers, he brought everything that we needed into place. It wasn't always totally smooth, but I could see that God was working through all of it. I, oh, there's a lot there, Alison. I just love that. In a sense, what I'm gathering from this is because of what you have been doing uh, in playing music and serving, you had enough, there was a demand there that that gave you a sense that, okay, it's almost like if you have that food that everybody keeps asking you to make when they come to your house or that mm -hmm. bake, that, that, that thing that you bake that everybody always said, you know, in other words, you, you kind of have an intuitive sense that, oh, wait a minute, uh, because I have more demand than supply in my current circumstance, if I would then create a business, I can leverage on that. But you also bring a point. Other people were telling you, right? You know, what I like to, in the midst of, in the midst of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. So you had that intuitive sense, you know, those who have gone through our class, you're going to talk about intuition as a, as a guideline. You, you have the experience, which is what you were doing. And, but then you have these other people, you know, what we call this, I would say it kind of like the, the, the external research, the, the validation. Other people that were kind of saying, cheering you on, that mm -hmm. were encouraging, because they were seeing things that maybe you even didn't see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. And I'm so grateful because I didn't even know what I wasn't seeing until they showed me what the potential was. Wow. So, so I hope you guys kind of see the, the environment that creates the ideal situation of launching a new business. So uh, where, oh, ah, my time. Allison, I'm gonna have to have you come back if you don't mind. We're gonna, we, we got about six more minutes here. Cause unfortunately this podcast is gonna be short cause I wanna, I wanna keep going with this because you, you had the perfect environment, perfect scenario that positions you to launch this new business. But let me ask you this question, and then we're going to bring it to wrap. So was there a unique advantage, the fact that it was a pandemic? In other words, as you've been proceeding to launch, um, you know, is, could you kind of, are there some things that you say, you know what, here are the things that, that made it work for me because it was a pandemic. And then let's talk about the disadvantage. What, what challenge did you find because it was a pandemic? 
So I think, I don't know if this is my personality or, or what, but I always think that no matter what situation you're in, you have a unique advantage. Um, there is something about that situation that is, that is different enough that it's going to be good for you. So for example, people want music lessons for their kids. That's, that's been true forever. They want, they want their kids to do music. People want to do music, but in a pandemic, they are home. They are being educated at home. They are um, needing emotional support. They are needing community in a way that is more, more, it's more painful. It's, it's a more felt pain because they can't, or they, they, they can't get it the way that they used to. So there were all these things that, that increased the need for music lessons. If you look at it the right way, you know, cause you could look at it the other way and go, Oh, well, you know, music lessons are just a luxury. Like, you know, nobody, nobody wants that right now because, you know, it's music. Why does anybody want to do music right now? They just need to survive. But no, what if you, if you change it into, no, you need music to survive right now. Then you're, then, then it changes everything. Um, the disadvantages. Of COVID. I, I guess some people asked for in-person lessons and we weren't going to provide that. I can't, I honestly can't. COVID was such a, was such a boon to us. It's hard to think of the, it's, I just hadn't considered the negative. So if, I, what an entrepreneur, you know, I'm going to keep following you. You are, this guy's, listen, you heard it here first. This is a rock star in the making because this is, you know, many people want to be in business. But very few people have the inner gifting to do so. And Allison, you do. Now, it doesn't mean if they don't, they cannot acquire it. This sense of glass full perspective is innate in you. This sense of optimism is innate in you. And, and, and so, so if you're listening and watching, you're saying, I want to launch a new business, consider the things you just gleaned from Allison, uh, the timing, the, the the environment, what gifts you bring to the table, the skills, the promise you're trying to address, the attitude, right? We're gonna have Addison come back and team see if you can schedule her either tomorrow or Friday if her schedule fit, because I wanna continue discussion because I wanna not get into some of the mechanics. But Addison, so there are people watching and listening, they wanna know, well, how do I um, access I am School of Music and, and you know, and, and who are the kind of clients that that can take advantage of your service? So talk to us a bit about sell yourself a little bit. What's what's the what's the pitch? If you if you have always wanted to play an instrument or sing, and there's just something in you, you're like, I just really want to do that. When is there gonna be a better time than now? You have, and, and when is there going to be a better opportunity? If you come to our school, you are going to feel good when you make music. You're going to leave every lesson going, maybe I'm awesome. Maybe I'm great. How do I, and, and you don't want to know why? Because you probably are. You probably are already a musician. You're probably already doing it. Let us give you something good. You don't have to, you don't have to make these huge strides and be an opera. You just want to make music part of something that you, you want to, you want to build that love. You, you can't love something as you can't love something deeply until you know it deeply. So come and learn a little bit and increase your love for music just a little bit more. It'll make, it'll make your whole life. It'll make your whole life feel better. No matter what you're doing, God built you to sing. He, got, he built you to worship. Get more ability to do that. You you will connect with the Lord. You will connect with your own self. You'll love it. You you can't live without it. And this will be any kind of music, any kind of instrument. Is there any limitations? Are there any limitations? We cover darn near everything. Wow. And yeah, we actually have a former Nehemiah employee working as a voice teacher for us. So I love you. Well, listen, go to the I Am School of Music website. 
uh, to learn more. Uh, 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 Allison is providing a 30-minute lesson for $20. Just go to the I Am School of Music, and you can just say, hey, I heard about this at Neymar Project. And then you can take advantage of $20 special. We're going to have Allison back because we're going to kind of talk about she got to a place where she felt she needed coaching, and then that kind of began the process. And we're going to keep following her. Allison, I'm just watching you. I'm saying, wow, one day you'll complete the biblical launch entrepreneurship course and present that business plan, and you're going to win. And, and I can just see it. More important than that, um, it's just going to be amazing to hear that pitch and and see that how you're going to grow because you're onto something here. Um, and thank you for entrusting us in shepherding your journey. And may we be used of God to help you get there. Uh, Jennifer Briss, a great discussion. Jennifer, by the way, congratulations. I was yesterday at your identity and destiny graduation. I didn't hear your presentation, but congratulations, complete identity and destiny. Um, Allison's the new year. Many people are watching and listening. And uh, first, uh, speak to those individuals who may already have businesses. Um, as, as, a, as the newcomer in this space, they may be discouraged or they may be considering, will this new year have the same challenges as last year? Could you, what encouragement would you give to those existing entrepreneurs as to why they should persevere and why this year will be different? And then speak to those who are considering launching businesses. They aspire to be the next Allison. So speak to both those groups if you can. Um, to people who are already running their business and honoring the Lord, I would say if 2020 taught us anything, it's that um, we need to be on our faces in prayer, <laughs> that we need to, um, that we need to create, create the space, create the time, carve time out to seek the Lord's face, to seek him in the Bible, to seek him in his word and to seek his direction for you. Um, it's, it's tough, but if you can be in community, be in community, um, and always continue, I, I should say, continue to honor the Lord and what you do. If you're part of Nehemiah and you, you know what their mission is, then you are already wanting to honor the Lord. And you're going to need, you're going to need after 2020, a replenishment of God's grace and his strength. So, so ask him for it. God is faithful and just, and he will, he will give you what you need. That's what it says in James. If you are considering being an entrepreneur, my biggest word of advice is get some, get some gold darn coaching now. Don't wait. Don't wish <laughs> to don't. Get get what you need to get. I would say, you know, get what you need to get put together so that you can get whatever level of coaching you can afford. Get the most amount of coaching that you can afford. Put put the money into it um, because you will be more successful that way. And especially especially with Nehemiah, because you know that they are an organization that is built to create businesses that honor the Lord. And if you're here, then that matters to you. Um, and then also just seek God's face and trust his word. Because if he says now is the time, then now is the time and he will equip you because that's what God does. You can go through, read your Bible and watch every single time that God calls and equips and calls and equips. He will do that work because that's what he does. Wow. What great words of advice. Allison, are you going to come back? Because we got to finish this. Uh, We're please, already over. Working with Victor, because you, you're giving some great insight. Hey, if you want to know more about Allison Wilkinson, the I Am School of Music, you want to reach out to her personally, visit her website, IamSchoolofMusic.com. Uh, you even have a book coming out. Next time you come, we're going to talk about that book. Um, but if you want to take music lesson, music classes for yourself, for your child, that group class, whatever it is, she's offering a $20 special, 30 minute 
a music lesson only for twenty dollars. Take advantage of it, and let them know that you heard about it here on EMI Project, and they will honor it. With that said, hey, if you want to know more about the Nehemiah Project, visit our website, nehemiahecommunity.com, nehemiahecommunity.com. There you can receive information about our training program, Biblical Entrepreneurship by Denny and Destiny, and so on and so on. You can learn about our coaching program, the one that uh, Allison is a part of, BSA, or the Business Success Accelerator, or the Executive Coaching Program, or the Elite Coaching Program. Or if you need capital, you can also tap into our capital uh, a, a network of kingdom impact investors, or you can just join the community so that together we can transform the way we community entrepreneurs of close to a thousand entrepreneurs from, from Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America, and of course, North America. You can join and connect Jennifer so that you can look at ways to glean from her as she joined along. Jennifer, thank you so much. Guys, thank you for watching and listening. Let me pray for you guys and look out for part two on this launching a new business in this pandemic series with Jennifer, with Allison Wilkinson. Let me pray for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord enable you to steward those talents that are under your care as Jennifer, um, as Jennifer, right? as Allison done hers, right? Whether it's the gift of music, whether it's, uh, it's, it's the gift of invention, whether it's the gift of cooking, wh whatever that is, whatever the gift is, May the Lord enable you to steward it in such a way that one day you will hear those wonderful words. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. He'll now make you ruler over much. God bless you and happy new year again. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Patrice. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. We'll talk to Victor. Yes.